this is uh, alternator alternator generates ac so that is why it is called alternator it's alternating voltage it is generating then construction and operating principle of the ac generator in both the cases the emf will induce in the winding so in first case the flux is stationary flux conductor is uh, moving so emf will induce emf will induce in the armature the type of emf induced is ac in second case the conductor is stationary the flux is moving so the emf induced in the armature conductor that is also ac so based on that there are two type of alternator one is rotating field stationary armature and another one is stationary field rotating armature why so in dc generator the field should be stationary armature should be rotating then only the generated ac can be converted into dc but in ac generator no restriction because uh, ac generator supposed to generate ac so either the conductor may be stationary or field may be stationary so there are two type of uh, generator one is stationary field rotating armature and rotating field stationary armature whereas in dc generator only one type that is stationary field rotating armature no other go the second case is not possible in dc generator so in ac generator both the case are possible we can allow field to rotate or armature rotate so according to construction wise there are two type uh, this is the arrangement for uh, rotating field and stationary armature so here uh, outer circle there is a um, armature this is the field two, two pole system so here uh, this is four pole system armature is stationary field is rotating so armature inner periphery made up of number of slot in that slot we will place the conductor okay this is the stationary field rotating armature so field is stationary armature is rotating this is the arrangement in uh, alternator we have two type one is uh, stationary field and rotating armature and another one is rotating field stationary armature once you have two type there is a question obviously there is a question which one is best so uh, the rotating field is the best actually why rotating field are the best most of the alternator is 11 kv or 33 kv so 11 kv means 11000 voltage 33 kv means 3 3 into 10 to the power of 3 volt so that means such a voltage uh, will induce in the armature where the emf will induce uh, emf will induce in the armature so if that high voltage uh, winding is stationary means it is better that is why the stationary armature rotating field is best then high voltage winding should be stationary so easier to collect large current if the armature is stationary large current you can easily collect if armature is rotating it is very difficult where the emf will induce in emf will induce in the armature if armature is rotating you have to collect the electrical energy from the armature so the armature is stationary means it's okay then uh, field voltage normally 110 voltage to 210 uh, 220 volt we will give field system is rotating you are giving only 110 voltage so lesser voltage compared to 11 kv or 33 kv even though this is dc this is lesser voltage so it is you can easily give this uh, 110 volt or 220 volt uh, to the field system okay then one more important thing only two slip ring is enough in three phase alternator if armature is rotating me we need three slip rings from rotating member if you want to collect electrical energy you need, need to connect the slip rings so if armature is rotating you need three slip rings a field is rotating means you, you need only two slip rings one is for positive supply and one is for negative supply you have to give dc supply to the field system then sparking problem okay so if armature is revolving uh, 11,000 volt you have to collect through slip ring and brush assembly. So there is a small gap between the slip ring and brush. So there is a sparking problem will come because uh, 11,000 voltage. Whereas if field is rotating, you are giving only 110 volt or 220 voltage. So the sparking problem is less. Then if the large voltage winding is stationary, so the ventilation you can easily provide. So these are the advantages okay so which one is best rotating field stationary armature so armature is stationary means so the inner periphery made up of number of slot okay inner periphery made up of number of slot then uh, inside you have the field system field system so you have to give dc supply to this field or permanent magnet anything so here n pole and s pole will create this you have to rotate because generator 
alternator, you have to give a mechanical input. So, while rotating this, what will happen? This will produce the flux line. So, it will close N to S, yes, it will close. There is a flux line. In that slot, we have the armature conductor. So, while rotating that, the EMF will induce that EMF is alternating in nature that directly you can tap. This is the construction. Stator is a stationary part. Then uh, inner periphery made up of number of slot. There are different type of slot. One is wide open, then semi closed and closed. So wide open means uh, its arrangement will be like this. The slot arrangement will be like this. Semi closed means semi closed, semi closed type of slot. Then uh, closed slot, closed slot. Okay. So wide open semi closed closed disadvantage of closed slot is manual cost is more that is uh, uh, for if any repair you, you have to rewire in that case it is uh, very difficult then uh, in wide open uh, you can easily place the conductor in case of repair you, you can easily rewire so this is the disadvantages normally is good magnetic material or silicon steel is used for stamping to reduce the uh, hysteresis loss then stamping means a small piece. Inner periphery, we have the slot. In the slot, we have the uh, conductor, armature conductor. Then uh, the bearings normally oil lubricator or anti-friction bearings we will use. So this armature satisfies the conductor. So this is another one view. Here this is not a single metal. Okay, this is made up of number of stamping. So this thickness, this thickness is nothing but a core length. So that is design oriented. So, according to core length, we have to arrange all the stampings. It looks like a solid piece, but it is not a solid piece, made up of number of stamping. Then uh, inner periphery made up of number of slot. In that slot, we have the armature winding. So, normally the type winding, single layer winding or double layer winding. So, single layer winding means there is only one layer in the slot. Double layer winding means you have double layer, okay. lower layer than the upper layer like that three phase winding will place. So, this is double layer winding and single layer winding uh, representation. Then this is the winding, three phase winding. Then uh, rotor construction. So far uh, discussed stator construction. In stator, inner periphery made up of number of slot. Then stator stamping is made up of silicon steel or uh, good magnetic material to reduce eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. Rotor, uh, two type of rotor, one is saline pole rotor and non saline pole rotor. Uh, saline pole rotor means projected pole. So, here you can see that is the uh, poles are projected in nature. So, like this projected type. So, non saline means smooth cylindrical. So, next slide you can see. So, here this is the saline pole rotor. This is non saline pole rotor. In saline pole rotor, this armature, this is air gap, this portion is air gap, and uh, this is uh, rotor. 4 pole rotor N S N S alternating uh, pole N S N S. Okay. So, here this is saline pole rotor. In saline pole rotor the air gap is not uniform whereas non saline pole the air gap is uniform. This is the difference. We have two type of rotor one is saline pole rotor and another one is non saline pole rotor. Then which one is best? Here the poles are projected. If you rotate with high speed, what will happen? This produces more noise because here air gap less. So, in that air, the rotor has to rotate. That means it produces more noise. Whereas in non saline, we have the noiseless operation. Saline rotor, the diameter of the rotor will be more. The diameter of the rotor more means the entire machine diameter also more. So, here the diameter of the rotor is less. This is the robust construction, non saline is the robust construction, saline is not robust construction. So, next slide you can see the this thing, this is another one view, saline pole rotor and uh, non saline pole rotor. So, this is practical saline pole rotor, 10 pole saline pole rotor you can see. Then this is the comparison between saline pole rotor and non saline pole rotor. Saline pole rotor means poles are projected, here non projected, air gap is not uniform here, air gap is not uniform. Here uniform, air gap is uniform, then here diameter is high and axial length is small, here diameter is small diameter, large axial length, here mechanically weak, here mechanically robust because the axial length is more, so axial length is more, so axial length is more, so mechanically weak. If you rotate high speed, there is a chance for 
damage. So mechanically weak. So mechanically weak. Here mechanically robust. So normally this is suitable for low speed application. So mechanically weak. So suitable for low speed application. Here this is non-salient is suitable for high speed application. So low speed application means normally the water turbine and IC engines are the suitable prime movers. Then steam turbine and electric motors are suitable uh, prime movers for the non-saline pole rotor. Then here uh, damper windings are required in case of saline pole rotor here not necessary.